हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम विद्या कोठेकर एंड फॉर्मर प्रोफेसर ऑफ बायोफिजिक्स फ्रॉम ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस दिल्ली एंड बीन प्रोफेसर ऑफ बायो इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स एट जेपी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी एट नोएडा I had also been professor of bioinformatics and also director of Dr. D. Y. Patil Biotechnology and Bioinformatics Institute. But what is my real identity? Is a teacher, and I like teaching. Now today we are going to discuss about a module DNA protein interactions. under the paper bio molecules and their interaction variety of proteins like polymerases transcription factors nuclease is histones and so on associated with dna some of these molecules recognize base sequence on dna while others like histones do not recognize attachment of endonucleases at a specific site repressor oppressor interaction are the few examples of a recognition of a dna by the proteins what are we going to learn in this module many things we first start with the basic concepts in dna protein interactions then we like to see non selective binding of proteins with dna later i would like to explain you the recognition of dna based sequence by specific motifs like helix turn helix motif then we'll see recognition of dna based sequence by zinc fingers i want to also explain you interaction of leucine zipper b zip and b hlh with dna we want to see the binding of proteins to single stranded dna and recognition that is very very important about the viral interactions or interaction of viruses with other molecules one of the most beautiful works on protein dna interaction is the interaction between 434 cro and 434 repressor with their operator stephen harrison at harvard university showed that recognition of different operator regions depends more on other factors than amino acid sequence in recognition only this was most important because it was contrary to our normal assumption that it is the protein side chain which interacts with the specific residues in the dna molecule and their observation was just contrary to it the 314 base pair regions that 434 repressor recognizes on the right hand side of the operator are not perfectly palindromic those on the left hand side are close to it the synthetic dna sequence used by these authors was closest to the sequence of ol2 with only one difference there was one inversion where at was replaced by ta basic concepts 
in DNA protein interaction. DNA base pairs GC, AT, CG and TA have characteristics electron donor acceptor pattern in major and minor growth. We have seen it earlier. The DNA binding proteins have DNA binding domains and special affinity to a single or double stranded DNA. DNA backbone and protein interaction. The sugar phosphate backbone can participate by electrostatic and stacking interactions with proteins and lead to structural modifications in DNA. There are number of direct and or mediated through water and ion contacts. The positively charged side chains of arginine, lysine, histidine can edge bond with electron acceptors, whereas negatively charged side chains as ASP, GLU can interact with edge bonding donors in the groups. Protein side chains base interaction. The polar neutral amino acids such as serine, threonine, ASN and GLN can have more than one hydrogen bond depending on their orientation. Cysteine, silenocysteine, glycine and proline can offer recognition through spatial motifs as zinc finger. Hydrophobic side chains, short and long amino acids, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, met, can participate in hydrophobic interactions. Aromatic residues, tyrosine, tryptophan and phenylalanine can have stacking interaction with DNA bases. Protein motifs involved in DNA interaction. Size-wise, alpha helix is the most suitable motif for interaction in the major group of DNA and a parallel edge bonded beta sheet can fit in minor group with one strand recognizing DNA based sequence similar to non intercalating drugs. For double stranded DNA, aromatic amino acids, phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan exhibit specificity. There is only partial insertion of these residues which causes bending of double stranded DNA. Latter decreases TN because of energetically favored thinking. A very interesting analysis was done by Luscombe based on the structures of DNA protein complexes. They analyzed 129 structures. The three-dimensional data was analyzed and tried to find out what interactions between protein and DNA in this 129 protein DNA complexes were present. The summary is presented in the figure. On the right hand side, interestingly, two third of interactions were due to van der Waals contact, no specificity. One third each were due to edge bonds and water mediated contacts. Latter also were usually non specific and acting as space fillers at the DNA protein surface. You can see 
the interaction, the majority of them between arginine and guanine. Then there are interactions between the lysine, guanine and adenine. Interactions between the base pairs, that is arginine interacts with AT base pair, AT base pair, AT base pair and so on. Many proteins have non-selective bindings with DNA. We have already gone through the example of histone DNA interaction. The picture is shown in the right hand side of the DNA binding to histone proteins in nucleosome. There are over 120 contacts between protein and DNA. And they are unevenly spread between helices alpha 1 and alpha 2 and L1 and L2 loops. There are many salt links, hydrogen bonding and water mediated interactions. These are important, but all of them are non-specific. Recognition of DNA based sequences by helix turn helix motifs. Many of the DNA binding proteins have helix turn helix motifs. The proteins that regulate transcription of DNA recognize DNA based sequence through discrete binding domains of less than 100 amino acids. Many prokaryotic regulatory proteins contain helix turn helix motifs that recognize and bind to specific region of operator of DNA. One of the classic examples is of crow protein. Repressor and crow protein operate a prokaryotic genetic switch region. Three related species of temperate bacteriophages, lambda, 434 and P22 have been studied. We show in this picture the genetic switch in crow repressor. There are three regions, OR1, OR2 and OR3. The repressor binds to OR1 and OR2. It turns off the synthesis of crow protein because repressor acts for its own synthesis by facilitating the binding of RNA polymerase shown in the lower slide to its own gene. When crow binds to OR3, it blocks binding of RNA polymerase to repressor promoter. The transcription of phage gene to the right can only occur. Now, let us see the details of this recognition. We show it in this picture the sequences of OR1, OR2 and OR3. The nucleotide sequence in this three region is palindromic and quite similar but not identical. The two halls of binding site are related approximately by two-fold symmetry axis shown here in the red color. Both crow and repressor are dimers. The palindromic part of OR1, OR2 and OR3 provides almost identical recognition sites. Structure of crow protein. Matthews et al. determined structure of crow protein from bacteriophage lambda at 2.8 astrom resolution. Each unit is of 66 amino acids. It folds into three alpha helices and three anti parallel beta sheets. The protein belongs to the class of alpha plus beta family. We show here 
the beta sheet region from the two subunits beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 and beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 the alpha helices 2 and 3 they should be 15 to 36 form a unique helix term helix structure dimerization of the protein depends primarily on beta strand 3 from both monomers we saw that in the previous slide these strands at the carboxylic end are aligned in anti-parallel fashion it was very difficult to co-crystallize proteins with DNA in the initial stages so model building of crow DNA interaction was attempted Ryan Matthews showed how the two recognition helices of crow dimer can be fitted in major group of DNA. Amino acids from alpha 3 helix can then make contacts with the edge of base pairs in major group. Binding of lambda crow with DNA. A schematic space filling model of dimer of crow bound to bend DNA was built by Ollendorf showing the interaction of two alpha helices in the major group of DNA which is shown in the picture on the left hand side. The recognition helix makes contact with half of the palindromic sequence. The second helix in this model binds to second palindromic sequence and the recognition of crow protein was because of helix turn helix motif. Specific amino acids in recognition helices were important because they made specific contacts with nucleic acid bases. Subunit interaction that provides correct distance and relative orientation was also found to be very important. The model was in agreement with genetic study. Binding of helix turn helix motif of lambda repressor to DNA. The structure of operating binding domain of lambda repressor was determined by Pabo and Levis in 1981. Bremer and Pabo in 1991 obtained the structure with cognate DNA sequence which is shown in the picture here. The PDB ID of this structure is 1 LMB. The helix turn helix and the loop region confirmation was very much similar to Crow. The two recognition helices could fit in two adjacent major groups of DNA as proposed earlier by Bremer, sorry, by Pabo and Levis and Ollendorf's model seen in the previous slide. Zinc fingers. The classic zinc finger was described in the laboratory of Aaron Klug at MRC UK from amino acid sequence of transcription factor TF3A from Xenopus Levis that controls transcription of ribosomal 5S RNA. The 344 amino acid sequence of TF3A contains nine repeats each of 30 residue each. The sequence is characterized by two cysteine at amino end and two histidine at carboxylic end and an intrinsic zinc ion along with it. Nucleotide sequence in bacteria of phage 434 in 
OR1, OR2, OR3 and OL1, OL2, OL3 is shown in this figure. Both Crow and Repressor are monomeric in solution but form dimers when these are bound to DNA. The proteins impose precise distortion in DNA structure. DNA is in B form and overwound in the center and underwound at the end. The distortion narrows minor groove at the center and widens major groove at the end. There are contacts between amino acid side chains of recognizing helix and DNA base pairs. We show in this picture, in the left picture, left of this is a normal B form of DNA and on the right of that is a DNA structure after binding of 434 repressor and you find narrowing of the minor group and widening of the major group in this picture. The right picture shows how the recognizing helices shown in green and blue bind in the major group. Recognition of DNA base by 434 crow and 434 repressor. There are several contracts between protein side chains and DNA bases. Although GLN29 and GLN28 are important for binding, they do not give specificity as the first two base pairs in all sequences were identical. So you cannot call that these are specific contacts. However, the methyl group of threonine 27 and GLN 29 form in a hydrophobic pocket to receive the methyl group of T12 is responsible for recognition. Let's see more about the recognition of DNA by 434 Crow and Repressor. DNA distortions created by both these proteins were not identical in different complexes but similar in both the halls. Binding of Repressor and Crow induces different shapes of distortion in the binding region. In case of repressor, two distortions induced by proteins are similar in OR1, while in case of Crow, these are similar to each other but different than repressor. In case of binding of repressor to OR3, the two distortions are different and hence repressor cannot bind as tightly while crow binding to OR3 is stronger. The mechanism of recognition of 434 crow and repressor is explained in this figure. Like we show the model on the left hand side and on the right are shown the distortions. Like when in the figure A it is the binding to OR1 by 434 repressor, the square part shows the distortions created by it. B is the binding of 434 crow. It creates distortions which are similar in both halls but different than in the case of repressor. In figure C is OR3 binding to 434R. Now the distortions have different shapes and hence the binding of 434R is weaker. Recognition of DNA by eukaryotic transcription factor. The transcription regulation in eukaryotes is more complex. 
the process is controlled by complex set of regulatory elements called transcription factors. We shall focus our attention on specific transcription factors as zinc fingers, leucine zippers, basic region leucine zippers, B zip, and basic region helix loop helix BHLH motif. Single stranded DNA binding proteins. As you know, there are number of proteins that bind and recognize single stranded DNA. And these interactions are very, very important. These are identified both in viruses and in organisms from bacteria to human. A typical example is of simplex virus, HSB1. The single-stranded or SS DNA binding protein, the head of eight helices binds and recognizes herpes simplex virus. The back of this protein has a very typical structure. It has three preta strands. The shoulder contains a helical and a beta sheet region. These interactions prevent a prematurely annealing between the two strands. And that is why that interaction is very important. Classic zinc finger. The classic zinc finger is a motif that is repeated in tandem to recognize DNA sequence of different lengths with each finger interacting with a specific base sequence. Other zinc fingers bind as a monomers to discrete sites or as dimers to palindromic site. The strength in binding can vary depending on the sequence of both protein and DNA and length of spacer between the fingers. This gives a very high level of recognition. We show in this picture a zinc finger with two cysteines and two histidine. It is a classic zinc finger. In this case, residues 1 to 10 form an anti-parallel hairpin motif with cysteine 3 in first beta strand and cysteine 6 in tight turn between first and second beta strand. The hairpin is followed by alpha helix from residues 12 to 24. The helix is distorted between histidine 90 and histidine 25 to form a 310 helix. Structure of ZIF268, a mouse protein with 10 base pairs of DNA. Again, this is the first example where the structure with the DNA molecule of zinc fingers was available. So, it is important how the zinc finger bound to DNA. In this case, the 90 residue peptide fragments consist of three zinc fingers. The 12 residues between second cysteine and first cysteine belonging to beta sheet, loop and alpha helix form the main interaction area with DNA. The D interactions are both specific as well as non-specific. ZIF268 DNA binding. In ZIF268, Five polypeptide chains bind to DNA. Arginine 46 at end of loop has two edge bonds with guanine in seventh base pair. Histidine 49 forms edge bond with guanine of base pair 6. Base pairs 2, 5, 6 phosphate groups interact non specifically with the side chains of histidine 53 
Arjun in 42 and Sirin 45. He stayed in 53, stabilizes zinc finger through interaction with imidazole, nitrogen and participate in H bonding. Zinc containing motif of glucocorticoid receptor. The glucocorticoid receptor belongs to the family of transcription factors that include thyroid hormone receptor, retinoic acid receptor, vitamin D3 receptor and steroid hormone receptors. Protein fragments produced from recombinant DNA technology have sequence specific binding to glucocorticoid responsive element. GRE. Structure of glucocorticoid receptor. The amino acid sequencing glucocorticoid receptor shows that each zinc atom is connected to four cysteine residues. The 3D structure shows that the two zinc binding domains are interwoven into a single globular unit. Second pair of cysteine initiates an empipathic alpha helix. The hydrophobic core of the two alpha helices pack against each other to form a compact core with hydrophobic interior. We show in this picture schematically the amino acid sequence of glucocorticoid receptor. There is a first zinc finger where four cysteines bind to zinc and there is a second zinc finger where again the four cysteines bind to zinc atom. Both the fingers are followed, followed by helical region. There is a P box and the D box. Specific DNA binding sequence are in this P and D boxes. Glucocorticoid receptor DNA binding. The two zinc atoms shown in green and the protein region in between zinc ligand for protrusions from the globular core. Lucy and others studied the binding of glucocorticoid receptor with 14 base pair DNA from GRE. The structure 1GLU PDBID is shown in the figure on the left hand side. The glucocorticoid DNA binding, the GRE comprises of two palindromic half sites separated by three base pair spacer region with sequence a G A A C A N N N T G T T C T. The spacer region sequence is unimportant, but it is important for proper binding. Its length is important. The DNA binding domain of receptors are monomers in solution, but dimerize upon binding. This dimerization is crucial for binding of GRE. If the 3 residue spacer is replaced by a 4 residue spacer, the receptor binds only as a monomer, displacing the second monomer. Glucocorticoid receptor DNA binding, it is seen that binding to DNA initiate substantial conformational changes in the dimer interface. Most of the interdomain contacts are made between the first two cysteine ligands of the second zinc finger. The specific base interactions are provided by a helix of the first zinc finger motif. The second helix has number of non-specific contacts. Lysine 461, valine 462 and arginine 466 make specific contacts with the age of the bases in minor group. Leucine GPA. This is another structural motif which binds to DNA. The sequence of these motifs when plotted on the helical wheel of alpha helix shows that 
leucine residues, all of them lie on one side of the field. The peptide dimerizes because of the hydrophobic contacts among the leucine side chains to form two parallel coiled coil alpha helical lipids of 3.5 residues each. Basic region leucine zipper B zip key C and 4 is a typical protein in this class. It is divided into two regions. Basic region of about 20 amino acids followed by C terminal of leucine zipper. The basic region contains each eight charge residues as arginine is involved in binding. Helix loop, helix DNA binding motif. Here, these are substantial amino acid identity and they bind to consensus DNA sequence like CANNTG. The myogenic proteins, MYOD, are important class of BHLH transcription factors. Latter are crucially involved in development of muscle cells. We show here a typical structure where there are two helices and a big loop in between the two and they bind to DNA. So students, what have we learnt in this today's presentation? First, we understood the basic concepts behind protein DNA interactions. Next, we tried to understand recognition of DNA based sequence by prokaryotic transcription factors with helix turn and helix motives. We have also gone over non-specific interaction between DNA and histone proteins. We have considered recognition of DNA-based sequence by eukaryotic transcription factors containing zinc fingers. We have described you the DNA binding to leucine zippers. B zip structures and BHLH structure. These are very, very important because they have both a zipper leucine leucine interaction and a basic which holds the DNA. Lastly, we have introduced you to an important topic of binding and recognition of a single stranded DNA that is SSDNA by single stranded DNA binding protein SSB. I guess that this presentation will let you understand importance between the interaction between the DNA and a protein molecule. Both the molecules have great importance because it is the proteins which control all our function, but it is the DNA which controls synthesis of protein through specific interactions and control the protein synthesis. So, this specific recognition of proteins and DNA plays great important role in the biology and important for designing drugs and controlling disease condition. Thank you.